Hello and welcome once again to Android Design in Action. I'm your host, Roman Eric. Hey guys, my name is Adam Kosh. And today we'll be talking about podcast creators and design tools. Now, uh, podcast creators, um, when we talk about podcast creators, we don't mean podcast listeners, which I believe um, the App Clinic guys have done before. Um, we're going to be talking about podcast creation, basically kind of the process of recording, um, I guess creating, recording, managing, um, and then uploading your podcast to whatever, you know, uh, podcast host you use. Um, so with that, should we jump in? Let's go for yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. So um, when you talk about podcast creation, you're probably thinking about a couple of different um, different functions, different, ba I guess, basic uh, uh, behaviors that a podcast creation app should offer. The first is obviously to record audio. Um, the second is probably to edit and fine tune your audio. So like, you know, once you're done creating or once you're done uh, with a recording, uh, going in and then trimming and changing things and inserting effects and muting, things like that. And then of course management. So you know, just like any sort of uh, blog management um, app, you probably want some way to um, you know, publish items, uh, look at currently published items, uh, have a draft mode for certain things and so on and so forth. Um, and then we also decided that um, you know, for podcast creation or, or I guess anything that has like a thick mode, um, you, you do have two modes here. You have the recording mode, like I'm currently capturing audio, and that's kind of like a, something that the user should be aware of, almost like playing music, right? If you're playing music, the user should be aware at all times that music is playing, and that's why you, know, you see things like a notification icon, or if you're in the app, you, um, you see kind of like a, a persistent bar. And then the other obvious kind of very thick mode is, uh, or lack thereof, is just the idle state or the pause state where you're not recording anything. So with these kind of high-level um, functions, um, you know, we decided to look then at. Um, actually, I forgot to I forgot to mention we're not actually going to uh, redesign or, or reimagine any existing apps. We're just kind of going to go through the process of designing like a hypothetical podcast creation app. Um, so here's kind of the the first set of things that we thought about. So the second thing set of things that we thought about is the kind of the the underlying functions, right? So for each of these main uh, themes for create and for edit and for manage, you want to have you know more specific p bits of functionality. So like for creation, you probably want to have the ability to you know start and resume recording um, during you know during the actual recording. Um, you want to be able to mute and unmute probably, you know, if, if something comes up and you want to, you know, silent, uh, insert a silence. And then you probably want to insert either live sound effects or clips, like, you know, an intro clip or an outro clip or like a, a fake applause or something like that. The gong. You always need a gong. Yeah, the yeah. gong. Um, and then for edit, you want things like to be able to edit the basic info, like the title and the description, you know, the stuff that basically uh, appears in the RSS. Um, and then some basic kind of editing functions as well as Uploading, obviously, right? You want to be able to upload the the final product to the um, the podcast uh, podcast host, um, and then for management, you obviously want to be able to you know list the uh, or ma view the list of uh, published uh, I guess podcast episodes as well as um, the list of um, drafts and maybe manage the drafts somehow. So we roughly, and th this is a very very basic podcast creation app that we were thinking about. Uh, we roughly kind of broke things out into these basic functions. And this kind of, you know, doing this type of exercise kind of helps um, scope out the app. And um, it's, it's a very good idea to do something like this before jumping into the design or, or the layout or anything like more detailed. Um, so with these, you know, high level um, functions, we then looked at, you know, just some basic explorations of, of layout, right? So once you know what the app does, um, you want to start thinking about you know what it, how it roughly looks like and how it roughly behaves. So you know we imagined a you know a single kind of uh, podcast creation or recording screen um, with a nice big um, you know uh, I guess chronometer or whatever to show the the current time. Just so you know you know how um, you know how far into the podcast you are. You want those you know those uh, functions of pause and resume and mute to be available immediately. And then you want to have some way of exposing live effects, right? So things like the intro clips, the outro clips, the um, the gong, <laughs> things like that. You'd be able to expose that. Um, 
we also, and then there's some couple of notes down there, not very important. Actually, one of the things I wanted to mention is that during the sketching process, you know, it's always important to think about larger devices. So, you know, um, these are some annotations that as I was sketching, just thinking, you know, what would this look like on tablets? And some of these annotations, you know, are just some very basic things like, you know, the multiple tabs split out into multiple panes on tablets and, uh, you know, this happens in landscape and so on. So it's always good to keep in mind things, even if you don't fully sketch them out, just uh, make notes of, of your, your thought process of what things, how things should adapt on, on different devices. Um, the next thing we want to do is look at the different states. So, you know, your app does have two states. It has a, a paused and a, I guess, a recording state. Um, and then there's some, here are just some ideas about what to do with like the action bar, what to do with the, the play and pause, or the record and pause button. Um, and then another thing that's very important on Android, obviously, is notifications. And we've mentioned this probably a million times. It's very important to have really kind of solid notifications. So we immediately thought that as one of these states, in this recording state, we want to have a notification, um, especially if, the, if you're not in the app. And we just kind of did a very quick mock of what that could look like with the, with the pause and mute actions in line with the notification. And of course, it's a rich notification, which has right. these uh, pause and mute buttons directly in the notification, which is really nice. Mm -hmm. And I think, and I'm not fully sure, I, I don't remember the exact framework details, but I believe that in a notification you can actually also specify a chronometer or chronometer, <laughs> whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So instead of showing the time, you can show the kind of time elapsed for something. So here it's just showing the time elapsed uh, incrementing every second. So you kind of get a feel, an on-the-fly updating feel for uh, how long the podcast currently is. Um, and then there's another note here, and this is something that, that's just really important to annotate your sketches to make sure that you take down those, those brief moments of, you know, of, of thought that you have when you're thinking about all these different things. Um, and then here's just another quick sketch of what we thought things could look like on a tablet where, again, um, things are slightly bigger. You know, the time display is slightly bigger. Um, things are you know, slightly you know, rearranged, but then your two tabs are then split out into, into multiple tabs, or into uh, multiple panes, where you have the kind of live effects on the right and, and um, the recording stuff on the left. So that was the sketching process. And uh, you know, obviously, um, this is a very compressed design process. And in a real design process, you want to you know, sketch much more. You want to iterate. You want to show it to people and get feedback. Uh, we only had enough, like, basically a day to do this, so we didn't really go through the whole process. But um, yeah, once you're, you're done with sketches, once you kind of have a good feel of what things should look like, the next step is to do wireframing. So, um, oh, wait, actually, oh, no, that's the notification that we already sure. talked about. <laughs> um, so the next thing is to do wireframing. So this, this looks a little higher fidelity than like a regular wireframe. Um, this is actually uh, in Illustrator. This was done in Illustrator. Most of our uh, screen mockups are done in Photoshop. Um, this week, we decided to do things in Illustrator. Um, and uh, you'll, you'll actually, you probably won't see this here, but um, almost all of these elements are from the stencil kit, which we'll talk about, um, that comes on developerthanandroid.com slash design slash downloads. Um, and so they provide you with a fairly high fidelity versions of things, but you don't necessarily have to do that. You can use lower fidelity stencils, um, even just squares and rectangles, just to get a feel for the positioning. But in this case, this is kind of like a medium fidelity mock where it's not pixel perfect, but it is using the, the actual um, visual elements of, of hollow. So here's what your management screen can look like. Um, we roughly separated things out into drafts and published. So you know, your drafts are probably the, the thing you're thinking about the most. Um, at any given moment is, you know, the next episode, the next episode. Um, and so those are prioritized at the top. Um, and then there's there's a little subtle kind of way to rearrange them. Um, Adam and I were talking about this. And, yeah, we, um, we were just thinking, you know, you don't necessarily have to, we, we, we actually don't know a lot about creating podcasts yeah. ourselves. So depending on how you think uh, people create podcasts, you, you could just prioritize these based on uh, last edited or last viewed or something like yeah. that instead uh, of being able to manually rearrange them using those drag handles. And if you do that, you should definitely mention like somewhere, like over here, there's like April 8th, April 1st. You should show like last edited mm -hmm. and then a time, just so that it's completely obvious what the sort order is. Yeah, um, and you could, you could also limit it to like, you know, the five most recent and then have mm -hmm. something that says, you know, show all or something. Yeah, that's, like that, that's right? a, definitely a good way to, like, I mean, you could actually do this using tabs, right? You could have drafts and then publish. Mm -hmm. um, but this is kind of a, it's a nicer way of presenting everything at once mm -hmm. without Somebody having screen. to burden the user with extra navigation. Sure. Um, okay, so, oh, whoops. So um, you know, there are some, some minor things here, basically just kind of the difference between drafts and publish is the most important thing, um, just to kind of get the users thinking about what is most important first. 
So that's management. We didn't kind of go into the, all the details of, of management. Oh, actually, um, there's one missing screenshot here. Uh, you know, if you're managing multiple podcasts, which you probably should allow, um, a great way to do this is using the spinner navigation. Um, and actually, another thing here is that there shouldn't be an up icon because there's no nowhere to go up. <laughs> so this is like medium fidelity um, mockups. You're not really going to get the, the the fullest kind of view of things from this. Anyway, let's move on. So um, next is the the creation and recording part, and we spent a lot of time thinking through this. Um, since I think this is kind of the most unique aspect of a podcast creation app, you have to really think about what the process of recording is like, what the what the uh, user experience is like there. The process of managing blog posts or or you know managing podcast episodes is very similar to a blog, so we didn't go into detail there. Um, but so some of the things you could do here, and this is you know as you can see, this is what it looks like on a tablet. Um, so we split things up into info and record, right? So info is basically letting you manage the, the basic details of the episode, like the, the title, the, uh, the description, things like that. But the most important part is the recording par process. So here you'll see that you know, there's a nice big um, preview of the, the current duration, um, nice big affordances for pause and mute. Um, and then this this kind of like interesting flourish, and this is where you can you know start exploring different uh, UI types, you know different interesting UI elements. Um, you know it's it's less interesting in sketches because it's a little harder to visualize. But once you get down to you know low to medium fidelity uh, wireframes, you can start thinking through different interactions. So in this case, we just thought you know wouldn't it be cool if you kind of have this like bar that changes uh, height based on the current volume, and then from uh, from the left it actually just creates the wave. So the wave is st slowly progressing to the left, um, but this is this little bar here is kind of growing and shrinking. And then when you're not recording, it just goes away. Um, so that's kind of one interesting take on it. I haven't seen that before. Um, and then another thing that we did here is we combined um, the uh, the live effects into um, into the screen. So we kind of took the standard multi-pane approach. We, we use a combination of tabs and multi-pane here, but um, kind of a standard kind of uh, great way to use space, I guess. Yeah, and this is nice because you obviously want easy access to these effects while you're recording, whereas mm -hmm. the info you can sort of edit once before or, or you know when you're paused or something like that. Yeah, and we'll, we'll see on the phone, you still have access to this stuff, but mm -hmm. it means just one swipe away. Yeah, it's just taking advantage of the extra screen real estate yeah. on, the, on the larger device. And then here, just some examples of how you can present like clips and live effects. Obviously, you know, pressing the dot, dot, dot should show you, um, should kind of take you to a customization or more effects screen or something like that. So let's move on. Um, so here's what it will look like on a phone. Uh, again, very similar, it's just that the effects uh, portion is taken into a separate tab. Mm -hmm. Um, and you have basically the same UI. It's it's somewhat responsive, right? I mean, it, you still have uh, slight changes in nav in core navigation between tab tablet and phone, but the core app is still very much the same. Um, so this is the recording state. And now, what does it look like in the in the pause state? Um, so in the pause state, you you no longer have the option to mute. Right? Mute doesn't make sense. Um, and the resume button has basically kind of been given extra treatment. Another thing I wanted to call out is the action bar. So um, if you're recording. The the up button should probably just take you you know up to the management screen that that kind of white screen that we had, um, and then you should show the notification probably or or a, like a persistent now recording bar at the bottom. Um, but if you're paused, it's kind of an indication that either you're just te te temporarily taking a break, or you want to or you're done right. You're you're actually done with this recording session. Maybe you'll, you'll record more later, um, but you're done. And so what we do is we actually change the action bar to go from showing the up, uh, the up button to the done icon, or the done uh, button, um, to kind of further give you the, the sense that, hey, you know, I can, I can press done, and like, I can then from there publish. Um, we also looked at the, this info section, so editing the, the details. Um, you know, if you swipe over, you can edit the title, the description, and you do still have this kind of persistent bar at the top to indicate that something is happening. So you always want to indicate that mode, right? If you're in that thick, heavy mode, like navigation or playing music or something, you always want to make sure that there's something on screen that indicates that. And if it's in the app, it could be a persistent bar like this. If you're out of the app, then it should be a notification. Yeah, and it's worth noting as well that the um the mute and pause buttons down here are also sort of persistent across these tabs, because um, you see it here in the info and we saw it on the record as well. Um, so that's sort of that thick state coming to the front again, being able to control it from any of these different screens. Uh, and then, of course, if you exit out of the app, you've got the notification there to control it. 
Yeah, and if you swipe over to effects, and this is kind of one of the re one of the biggest reasons for this, if you're in effects, like if you're playing an intro clip, you probably want to mute yourself for a moment. So you press mute press the intro clip, and as soon as the, that's done playing, you kind of unmute. So it's, it's very easy from a single screen at any point to, to do what you want to do. Mm -hmm. um, and then the, I think one of the last components of this is uh, what happens when you're in the info screen and you're paused. Um, at that point, you probably want to give the user the option to preview and publish. So if they press preview and publish, it takes them to a separate flow where they can kind of maybe even edit, make, maybe make tweaks. Um, but they, uh, they can kind of uh, preview what they've currently recorded. Um, once they're ready, it'll upload using like a persistent, um, like an ongoing notification with a download upload progress, and then publish when they're ready. So pretty straightforward. Um, a lot of this stuff is, you know, is nothing very revolutionary, but here's just one approach at creating a podcast creation app. Um, I think there's one more screen on editing. <coughs> so uh, we, we couldn't really, we didn't spend the time to figure out where this would go into the greater scheme of the app. Um, but you know, one of the things that's that's interesting is you know this is a is a different type of um, of medium that that you're probably used to, right? So uh, on Android, you're probably used to you know editing photos or editing text or selecting text. But you could use the same uh, metaphors and the same visuals to indicate or to to apply to audio. So you could do something like long press on the audio to kind of select like a second or so, and then show these little drag handles so you can um, you know drag them around. Um, and then you can have like an insertion point. So if you have something uh, in the clipboard, um, then you can kind of like do a paste. Um, you should also offer things, I mean, we didn't show this here, but you know, things like uh, fade out, fade in, all sorts of effects. Those are very contextual to the current point in the audio you're looking at. So definitely make sure to kind of um, use this type of UI if you're, if you're doing sort of editing. I think it would make a lot of sense. Yeah, and then we were chatting about a, a, a pretty neat addition or feature where you could possibly play the first second of the selected clip and maybe the last second as well. Yeah. So you can sort of make sure that your anchor points are sort of at the point you want them to be. Yeah, and like a, one way you could do that is you can offer like little play buttons here. So like a little play button here and pressing that plays the first second and a play button here um, that plays the, the last second up to that point. So you probably, I mean, just so that like you have kind of like the I guess not the pixel perfect, but the, the frame perfect uh, <laughs> view of things. Another thing I wanted to mention is uh, is gestures. So you also want to support gestures like you know multi finger gestures, um, and then like the you know, the scrolling gesture. And uh, if you're implementing this, I actually just wanted to make a kind of a, a quick um, shout out. Uh, there's a new there's an updated gestures training uh, I guess class. If you go to developer.android.com slash training slash gestures, uh, there's a nice piece of sample code that shows you how to do all these different things with all the different gesture detectors. To it's a very nice piece of sample code. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, Written um, by a very talented developer. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So with that, I think that was it for podcast creation. I think we're about halfway. So let's move on to design tools. Yeah? Yeah. So design tools, uh, when we talk about design tools, we like to um, you know, not just we, we like to break things out by the hat you wear, the the discipline. So we don't like just talk about you know here's just the basic design tool for designers. It's there's you know different disciplines like interaction design, visual design, um, motion design, asset production, which is kind of a very specific thing to Android. You know, creating nine patches and things like that. So you know we like to break down uh, the tools that that you should be using based on this type of um, kind of I guess these hats that people wear. Um, and you'll see like a little circle in each of these slides indicating what, uh, who this is for. So the very first set of tools, and this is very, very obvious, but uh, the Adobe Creative Suite. And this is you know, uh, Illustrator, Fireworks, Photoshop, InDesign. Um, two things I really want to quickly call out. Uh, the first, actually, I guess three things. The first is that um, you know, we do have official Android stencils available for these. And so uh, what you saw today with the podcast creation apps or podcast creation app was using the official Android stencils for Illustrator. Um, the next is that you know most of the Android design team, as far as I know, they use uh, you know Illustrator, Fireworks, and Photoshop. Um, Illustrator is very very common with our interaction designers. Uh, for visual design, uh, I think mostly they use Photoshop and Fireworks. Uh, but Fireworks can actually work really well for interactive interaction design as well because uh, it can actually create clickable sections. Like you can have interactive mockups, and uh, I think I demoed this. Two years ago, you can create like an interactive PDF where you click on different things and it takes you to different pages, and it's kind of a, a much nicer way to uh, to visualize a flow or to visualize a sequence of events in your mm -hmm. app. So definitely consider doing that. 
Um, and then here's there's a recent article on smashingmag.com on how to use InDesign to do something very similar. I haven't tried this myself, but it seems really interesting. So if you're doing interaction design, definitely check out this article about InDesign interaction design. Let's move on to uh, some inter other interaction design tools. Um, you know, so for interaction design, obviously one of the things you want to do is sketch a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Um, but there are also some, some uh, I guess, software tools for, for sketching, uh, I guess for creating wireframes, and especially interactive wireframes. Here's just a quick selection of them. Um, I generally prefer using uh, OmniGraffle, um, since we have official stencils for those. Um, and you can actually do both low and high uh, fidelity wireframes there. Almost all the other tools, since they don't have official stencils, um, they have like unofficial stencils, which aren't really high fidelity, which is fine. I mean, for wireframes, it's, it's totally okay. Uh, a bals and actually, the last three here, Fluid UI, Proto.io, and Balsamic Mockups, those are also really good because they're web-based. And what that means is that you can create, um, you know, you can create actual prototypes, you know, uh, deploy them to a website, um, and uh, you know, share them with your product manager. You could also, you know, create. I think you can create logins for other uh, design team members, so you can have like, you know, multiple members of the design team working on the same project all on the web. So some pretty cool stuff there. And then Proto.io is actually something that uh, Paul Burke recently mentioned um, to us. Uh, basically something that lets you uh, actually mock up gestures as well. So you can do like scrolling and swiping and things like that. So lots of good tools here. And there's more than just these, obviously. But here's the quick selection of some of them. Um, here's uh, what Fluid UI looks like. Just a quick example of the interaction, the interactive uh, I guess mockups you can create. So in this case, you know, like this uh, My Agenda tab, when you click that in the final interactive uh, HTML file, it actually takes you to a different page. So you can kind of create these links. That's really cool. Um, the next tool we wanted to talk about was Android Design Preview. So this is more for visual designers. Um, and this basically uh, lets you uh, mirror a portion of your screen from your computer. To your uh, to your Android device. So let's say you have Photoshop open and you're doing like a you have a high fidelity visual uh, mockup open. This is actually something from our from one of our past um, episodes. So all you need to do is you need to open up the Android Design Preview app. It's this little window that pops up here. Um, you can then drag around this red rectangle. It's kind of faint; you can't really see it. But you drag it to encapsulate your um, you know the part of the screen that you want to mirror. Um, and then it mirrors that to your device. What's not pictured here is uh, the, uh, I guess, the USB cable that you need plugged in. So you do need to use uh, USB, um, and it doesn't work over Wi-Fi currently. But uh, it's definitely a good tool to have um, in your arsenal. Um, next, we have. Um, and actually, I'm going to spend a little bit of time on this. So uh, you know, a lot of a lot of designers on Android, I guess they they. Often, not really complain, but they they lament that there's you know there's a lot of asset production work to do. Like you have to you know create nine patches, and you have to create you know all these different states for buttons and things and tabs and whatnot. Um, and you know certainly you know there are a lot of things you do need to create. You know to create a really awesome app, you do need to think about different uh, screen sizes and well, not only really screen sizes, screen densities and things like that. Um, but there are a lot of tools out there that can help in the process. And this is especially true if you're following the hollow visual language. Right? So if you have your completely custom UI, there's not really anything that will help you with that. I mean, there are some tools like some Photoshop Actions and, and Fireworks uh, you know, plugins that will do that. Um, but for the most part, you know, if you're following hollow, there's some really good tools online for this. Um, so the first is the Android Asset Studio. We covered this before, so I won't go into detail on it. But um, the next is the Action Bar Style Generator, which we talked about in a past episode. I just want to reiterate how important it is to use this tool. Um, basically, it lets you, you know, very quickly um, you know, throw in a few colors, and it will generate all the stuff, all the cruft, the XML files, the PNG files, basically everything that you need to get your action bar like kind of to a base level of theming. It's a good jump start. And I think it's also compatible with uh, action bar Sherlock as well. Yeah, that's right. So there's an option to create um, Sherlock styles. So if you're using action bar Sherlock, it'll, it'll just work with you. Um, and it, it's just, I, I just can't stress how important it is to use this in addition to action bar Sherlock, in addition to you know the, the core action bar APIs, rather than try to build your own thing. If you try to build your own custom you know action bar, you're just gonna have, you're gonna have to re-implement a lot of stuff, and it's just not gonna look as good. So um, definitely use this tool if you can. And the last tool, which is 
uh, I think even more impressive in its technical uh, kind of, in, in the amount of stuff it does for you is uh, Android Hollow Colors. Um, so Android Hollow Colors, it's, it's very much, it's very similar to Action Bar, to the Action Bar style generator, um, except it creates UI controls for you. So if you want like, uh, you know, purple, let's say your brand is, you know, your core brand accent is purple. If you want purple check boxes and purple buttons and purple text fields and everything, um, Android Hollow Colors will just generate all this for you. You basically tell it which UI controls you want to create um, or which controls you plan on using and it will generate those assets for you. Um, the last thing I wanted to mention is with the Action Bar Style Generator, it's not only good for creating Action Bar assets, it's also good for creating touch states. So the standard touch state on Android is um, this kind of semi-transparent blue overlay. Um, but let's say you, your your brand accent is not blue, right? Let's say you want to actually you know use something like red or, or purple or whatever. Um, one of the things that the Action Bar Style Generator does is it creates a, a stateless drawable, which is kind of a, um, a stateful drawable, uh, a stateful graphic uh, that contains the the um, assets for the different states. So for if there's nothing, it's just transparent. If it's pressed, it'll actually use your accent color as that overlay. And if it's focused, meaning the keyboard has kind of, um, you know, the user has selected that item with the keyboard, um, it'll use the standard kind of focus style uh, with different levels of translucency, uh, but it'll still apply your accent color. So the Action Bar Style Generator is really good for generating that. Um, and I'd say that the combination of these two tools gets you most of the way for baseline branding of an app. So definitely use them. Really important to do that. Um, last thing, I guess, for design tools, and we'll probably talk more in, in future episodes on design tools, but um, the last thing I wanted to you know, call out today is just feedback tools, right? So um, you know, we, we very often provide designers, developers with feedback. They give mm -hmm. us PDFs. We provide them with feedback back. So some of the tools that we use um, are Google Drive, specifically um, the Docs Editor, um, as well as the PDF Editor, or the PDF Viewer. Um, PDF Editors like you know, Preview on Mac or, or Acrobat, um, and Sketch. Um, and so you know, I'll, I'll briefly mention for PDF Editors, it's really, really, really useful to be able to just you know, you know, load up a set of screenshots and just annotate. PDFs have this awesome annotation feature where you could just you know, drop in a, like a text bubble annotation um, you can just really quickly mark up all the different things that you either see wrong or you like or whatever. And it's a good way for both developers or product managers to communicate with designers, as well as for designers to communicate um, to developers. So designers, uh, rather than using specs or red lines, if you don't want to, you could just you know, create your mockups, you know, throw them into a PDF, and then just annotate, like, this should stretch, this should... Um, you know, should be whatever, something else. Um, you could use PDF editors or PDF annotations. Yeah, we use that. this as a feedback mechanism a lot. Um, it's worth noting, though, that not all PDF viewers support adding these annotations, but a, a lot do. Um, so, you know, if, if you're looking for it in your particular PDF viewer, you may need to switch to another one if you can't find it. Yeah. Um, and then for Google Drive, one of the things I love about Google Drive is its commenting abilities. Mm -hmm. So in Docs, you can just, you know, spawn a comment thread on a specific line of feedback. Um, and then in the image editor or the image viewer, as well as the, the PDF preview, I believe there's a way to kind of like highlight um, a certain portion and start a comment thread on like a, a single rectangle kind of. So it, it's similar to the PDF editor in the sense that you can um, kind of annotate things, but um, certainly it's, you know, the combination of these two tools we found to be super yeah. useful. It's feedback. nice when there's a lot of back and forth, when you've got a few people commenting on a particular issue or, or comment. Yeah. And the last one, I'd say, is Sketch. So Sketch is uh, you know, something that basically lets you annotate screenshots. Um, and it's really useful for feedback on specific uh, photos or specific mockups. It, um, it doesn't let you work with multiple, or it doesn't easily let you work with multiple things at once, multiple screenshots at once, as far as I know. Um, but it's certainly very useful for you know, creating arrows and annotations and things like that on top of your mockups. So these are just some of the tools we use, uh, like I said before, we'll probably talk about more in the future. So with that, let's just quickly cover design news. I think we only have one item. Um, the only item is from, uh, from Paul Burke. Uh, so we mentioned, uh, I think, on, last, on the last show two weeks ago that there was a uh, New York City Android Designers Meetup. Um, it went really well, and if you came, then it was great meeting you, and thanks for coming. Um, but uh, if you weren't there, uh, Paul actually shared a presentation on some resources, so, you know, some good um, you know, community resources for designers. 
So um, here's the link to the presentation, um, the, I guess the slides. Uh, definitely take a look, and uh, I think we'll probably be posting another uh, New York City Android Designers Meetup sometime in the next, hopefully, few months or so. Um, but yeah, thanks for coming if you came. And I think that's it. That's it for the show. So uh, yeah, uh, one last thing, uh, we just want to give a shout out to the App Clinic, uh, the show that our teammates run on the West Coast. Uh, they often delve more into the technical side of things. Yep. So definitely tune in, tune into that later this week. And they'll be covering podcast creation apps, as far as I know. I don't know what they'll be talking about, but something related to podcast creation. So if you like the podcast creation stuff, tune in there. All right, thanks for joining, guys. As always, I'm Roman Eric. My name is Adam Kosh. See you guys. Peace out.